Hey, Brianna from Bulletproof Outdoors here. Today we have a very special guest joining us. She survived the jungles of Ecuador on Discovery Channel's Naked and Afraid, where her and her partner had to last 21 days with no food, shelter, clothing, or water. Un real. For the record, does Naked and Afraid exploit women? There's a lot of hate kind of floating around on the internet kind of about the show being fake. Before I introduce this guest, let me just remind you that if you're new here and you're into fishing, hiking in the outdoors, you might want to consider subscribing. And if you do, make sure you hit that little bell icon so you don't miss anything. Without further ado, join me in welcoming from season seven of Naked and Afraid, Melissa Miller. Melissa, thanks so much for joining us. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? It's going good. It's going good. So I wanted to kind of ask you, like 21 days on Naked and Afraid, as far as I know, there wasn't even much of a prize. Um, why do this? Why put yourself through it? What was your motivation? Yeah, the, the prize isn't really supposed to be like a part of the thing. It's just supposed to be for people who want to just kind of um, test themselves. Um, I always say a different, it's like a different breed of people who do naked and afraid, um, people who just want to test themselves um, in the utmost way, uh, mentally and physically. And I've just been that kind of person uh, my whole life, uh, whether it's been in sports or like extreme sports or um, just any, well, anything, even school, you know, I, I just have always wanted to push myself um, into my boundaries. Right. So after getting there, um, being naked, uh, how, how long, I mean, how much, how bad was the anxiety and, and how long did it take to kind of wear off and for you to be kind of comfortable standing there naked with a stranger? Um, so I like, so before filming this, like really only, the only people that ever seen me fully naked were like long-term relationships. Um, I don't even really like being in a bathing suit that much. So I was, um, I almost started crying crying before I had to take off my clothes. I had major anxiety about it. But um, like once my clothes came off uh, and I just got into this like primitive survival mode, it's like uh, I, I was totally comfortable after the first day. My, my partner actually took longer, uh, I think, to really? open up about. Yeah, definitely. He would always like take his, he'd always put his like bag in front of his yeah. <laughs> like he, he Like you could just tell he was all, you know, he's being modest though, which yeah. is good. Yeah, yeah. So um, what was kind of the most overwhelming experience? Again, they don't show nearly enough, but um, I mean, we, we saw you guys getting absolutely killed by mosquitoes, um, you know, the, the having no clothing, having little food. Um, I know your shelter, or not your shelter, but you guys had built that bed within the first couple of days and that collapsed on you. So what was kind of the most overwhelming thing that just kind of hit you and, and made you kind of, I don't know if you did second guess everything, but what kind of just hit you and you went, oh my God. Um, gosh, so many, the rain, um, the bugs were absolutely terrible, but I had prepared myself for the misery of the bugs. Um, back here in Michigan, I was doing shelter building in the swamplands. Like I would go out and, you know, like shorts and a bra and I just sometimes would sit there and let the mosquitoes bite me. And I wow. just had to, and I'm just like, this is so miserable feeling, but this is what I'm going to, this is what I could potentially feel like for 21 days. And, mm -hmm. um, the rain, though, the rain and how hard it fell and how randomly and often it fell. Uh, we lost our fire. The st our fire started detached. So, like, when we would get down pours, um, we were just terrified of losing our fire because if we lost mm. our fire, there's no way we were going to get it back, especially out there. You can't even do a friction fire. So. Right, right. That, yeah, that rain was scary. <laughs> yeah. I was really impressed by, by the survival skills that you showed out there with, you know, the, the torch with the resin and you catching the snake and feeding your big strong partner you know i remember he pointed it out to you and you were the one to get up that tree and get it um building that escape raft and you, you know you jumping right in the amazon and paddling along where did you learn all of these kind of where did you learn to be so fearless and and where did you pick up all these survival skills um it's all been self-taught really um kind of an odd duckling on my household um, no one was ever huge into the outdoors, but just since a child, I was walking around outside barefoot, playing, you know, I was playing with the boys and building forts, and it's just always been something that's, that I've loved, and um, the fearlessness thing is just, I, I love uh, I love adrenaline, and I do like to kind of push myself in um, those type of extreme situations. I like being scared sometimes, and um, but I also have a lot of knowledge and trust in nature, and I know, you know, a lot of people are afraid of things. Um, like alligators and or crocodiles and if, if you know you know they're not out there to get you and they don't hunt during the day you know so i mean i'm not saying go swimming right. alligator and crocodile and best of waters but um just i think my job helped me uh not be as afraid because i had a better understanding of the the habits of the animals if you it's hard to explain right. but um what is what yeah, is I'm, that job for anybody that doesn't know what, what do you do for work 
Um, so my, um, well, I do a couple of things, but my main job, like my nine to five job, if you will, is um, I'm an environmental educator at a nature preservation. So we have Great. animals and I do, I lead hikes and I uh, uh, design nature curriculum and present it to all people of all ages and all that Amazing. stuff. What a great yeah, job. Yeah, oh, I, nice. I love it. Yeah, yeah. I, I absolutely love my job. Perfect, perfect. So, again, there was so much not shown on TV, leaving questions. One of the biggest questions that a lot of people had, I know I had, where did you get your first meal and where did you get calories for 21 days out there? So, um, on Naked and Afraid, they only usually show about one or two kills, but most of the survivors eat way more than they show. We ate every day. Uh, okay, I started good. eating... Um, Around day three, found I found these. Uh, they're like coconut palm. They're 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 just nuts, and they're actually uh, roots, and they're delicious. They're like tiny little coconuts. So I was eating those like hundreds of them, hundreds. I would like fill up my bag and just crack and eat them all night. And me and Chance would go get them. And uh, the first protein meal I caught was day seven. Um, it was the Amazon peacock bass, oh, and nice. I actually caught it. I caught it with my hands. Actually, um, it was. Come on. It was yeah. I was like kind of that was one I was like why didn't they show that that yeah. was super cool yeah right um and it was it was so good it was like a fattier um, more tasteful salmon um oh, it's wow. actually a delicacy I think and I just know it's a popular fish to eat it was right. so good but yeah that nice. day seven so one week without protein wow um, that, yeah it's tough because you're because you're working right you're excruciating a lot of it or you're using a lot of energy and your muscles so so that's tough mm -hmm. that must have been really tough oh yes. yeah it's, when you don't get protein and you're collecting big heavy firewood for like three hours out of the, every day it's like right. just tiring you're so even even standing up is like tiring yeah. it's like standing up is an effort it's yeah. so weird wow wow okay so tell me what are some of what are some of the biggest moments i know you just mentioned that peacock bass but what are some of the other big moments that uh that didn't make it to film that weren't that weren't captured and put on tv um, well, one was when we went spear fishing at night. Uh, we speared fish, uh, but it made it look like we didn't. Uh, oh, no. But we went to bed with full bellies. We actually had some like fish left over after Perfect. that. Um, another one that I thought was going to make it was when I was fishing for piranha, and the fish were like ripping my line apart. Like you just feel them tugging, and I was catching a couple of them. But then my hook got caught at the bottom of the river, so I had to like swim in the middle of this river and like hold my breath and like follow my line down all oh the way. I don't God. know. It's like yeah, it's like 15 feet in like these piranha infested waters, and oh that was God. kind of a yeah. I had a lot of cuts, so I was like, oh God, please <laughs> <laughs> don't smell the blood. Holy yes, cow. I know. I was like, no. <laughs> Another one. But, yeah. They should have shown that one on TV for sure. Unreal. Oh yeah. There's so many things. So, t I, I don't know, I'm sure you've heard there's a lot of hate kind of floating around on the internet kind of about the show being faked and, and almost some people kind of suggest that the producers are there in tents kind of giving you meals when the cameras turn off and everything like that. Uh, how do you respond to, to accusations like that that you might hear uh, on, online? I mean, whatever. There's always going to be people who disbelieve you. I mean, I have scars on my body. I have yeah. photos of the hundreds and hundreds of thorns I wish I could show you right now yeah. I should I wish I could show you the photo but um just on the bottom of my feet I had just and if you look at the before and after pictures I mean I look absolutely emaciated when I come out of that challenge and I had like cyst infected pimple or like pimple looking lesions um I had like actual like things that got so infected I had to get like cysts extracted wow. um so it sucks to go <laughs> through that and have fake. doubt yeah oh yeah yeah it like and sometimes they mess up with, like, sometimes the editing will get weird, like, we'll do weird editing, which people will be like, oh, that's fake. She's like, this is different than that. Her hair looks different than right, now. I'm like, right. no, that's just a mess up in editing. It was just different. Right. Yeah, it's whatever. People can believe as much as they want. I know what I did, and yeah. I know uh, that it was very real and life-changing. So. Yeah, absolutely. So so what about the criticisms that, that also kind of go around about how the show – exploits uh, young and attractive women rather than kind of getting out and finding maybe the best survivalists and they want to make sure that it's young and attractive kind of appealing on the eyes what what are your what do you how do you respond to those types of criticisms and and for the record what do you think and does naked and afraid exploit women in that way um not, not at all uh, there's actually there's like plenty of women on that show who are you know like it's not it's not all young attractive women but one thing that all, all the women do have in common is um is their their skills you know and right. i i've dealt with that my whole life like but 
in order to get on that show, I had to go through physical mental evaluations. I just showed, I just sent in footage of me doing, you know, a uh, friction fire of shelter building and talking about my knowledge. I had to get tested, you know, thoroughly and interviewed right. in a process to get on that show. And um, maybe they, maybe uh, a cute girl might get it over a, another girl of equal skill just because right. she's got, a, which is sad, but um, it, that might happen because at the end of the day, that is a TV show. But there's absolutely, there's no exploitation. Um, it's just, I, I see people of all shapes and sizes on that show. So I think people just kind of focus in on the couple of girls that are like the couple of people who are like, oh, that girl's attractive. They must have done that for a reason. But then you watch it and like, man, some of the, some of the girls I think that are like the prettiest on that show, like are just bad ass. They're just total badasses and they know right. their stuff. And I, yeah. And I know these women personally too. We're all good friends and they are, they're all real survivalists and they all have skills. So right. yeah, <laughs> you know, tell me, did, uh, did the show change you and would you do it again? Oh my gosh. It changed me so much. Uh, getting off that boat or, you know, the after extraction, extraction, it was like the happiest, most full moment of my entire life. I can't, I can't put into words what I felt, but, um, and, uh, I did do it again. Uh, we actually just announced, um, so we just announced our season premiere. I did the naked and afraid XL 40 day challenge. And, uh, last, no, yeah, last November I was in South Africa. Oh um, my surviving. God. Yeah. And I when can't tell you if air? I made it. Um, so they did like the introduction episodes actually last week, but this Sunday it airs. So oh this Sunday, God. um, episode one, so beautiful are you allowed <laughs> to give us summer. any uh any info about that how did that go or are you sworn to secrecy i can definitely tell you something yeah, like the first night we heard a lion right outside our shelter um oh. it was yeah um i wanted to see a lion so bad in africa but like the first or maybe it was the second night uh when i actually heard this like it was like <sighs> it's like a chuffing noise that they make it's kind of like a territorial thing um right uh, yeah, we heard that and we were like, holy crap. So we made these little fire bombs. We started making our fire bigger and throwing this hay into it. And we all like grabbed our knives and just kind of stayed posted. I mean, it was, uh, it was scary. And then we later found out from one of the hunters there that there were two in our area. There were two like man eating lines. They had like killed. Yeah. They had killed a poacher and they had killed like one of the park workers. Africa was insane. Um, oh. Wow. We people came back with like larva coming out of their skin. Um, wow. There's some sicknesses that occur. Um, you'll see like some major sunscreen, some really weird bug bites, and some areas that get very infected. This will be the best season of Making Afraid like ever. Okay, so I wanted to ask you about your Instagram. I was checking it out, and you had some really, really cool like weaponry and knives and and awesome stuff on there. Tell me a little bit about that and how that's been going for you. Um, yeah, I've been working on my Instagram pretty heavy for the past like year or so, and um, it's just it's exploded. Uh, I started posting like survival bushcraft stuff, and then people started like sending me knives, and um, I started doing knife reviews and like right. promotions, and then videos on my. I started doing YouTube videos, um, and it just like uh, I worked really hard on it, um, but I kind of found I was like, there's not many women out there doing, you know, knife talk or like survival talk and I was right. like this is a good opportunity to kind of share something I'm passionate about and get get exposure and, and make and turn this into like a money a money making thing too yeah, and sure. it's something I I love to I love to do so yeah. awesome well good for you congrats it looks like it's going really good it seemed to be really exploding yes I have a lot of I have it's so weird like I, I just like look back a year ago I had like two knives and now um I mean, do you want me to show you my closet? Yeah, for sure. Let's see. <laughs> oh, gosh. My house is really messy, so I'm going to, like, up tilt it so you can't see it no in problem. the background. <laughs> like, so this is, like, just part. Like, this is just part of, like, my knife is going to kind of, I don't know if you can kind of see, like, what. Holy cow. Here, but, wow. Um, this is, like, some of some of my collection. Oh, like, my goodness. Look at here, this. Look at like, this. Don't yeah. mess with this girl. <laughs> I really, like, need a, because, like, I have, like, pretty much, like, I, I don't know. I have like probably over 80 knives and Holy I cow. probably shouldn't be talking about this right now. I'm gonna get back, <laughs> but I'm going to get like a safe because I have way too much value uh, yeah. just hanging out in my closet. Awesome. It's a heck of a collection. Yeah, uh, zombie. Oh yeah. So if the zombie like apocalypse does come, like you can always come over here. I can hook you up with whatever. With Will whatever, do. <laughs> whatever sharp thing you need. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> 
All right, so so I've no, I know you have uh, Naked and Afraid XL coming, and that's going to be airing this Sunday. Super pumped to see that, and you've got a lot going on. You, you know, you finished filming that, and uh, when we were speaking earlier, you were telling me about how you're going to be um, volunteering or working for a survival camp in the summertime, and I know you've had a lot of requests to do speeches and things like that. So tell me a little bit about what's next for you and what you've got in store for 2018. Um, just a lot of things, just trying to keep moving forward. Um, yeah, I'm going to be a headline presenter at the Michigan Bushcraft Gathering. I've been doing more work with knife makers. Um, I actually just got back two weekends ago um, doing promotional work with uh, Fleming. They're called Fle Fleming Knives. Um, I'm also, June 1st, I'm going to be doing a lot of work at the, the 2018 Atlanta Blade Show, which is the biggest knife show blade show in the country uh i've just been continuing to just grow my instagram and grow my brand um, basically right now i want to keep teaching nature and i just want to keep moving forward okay that pretty much sums it up so let's all congratulate melissa by smashing the like button for this video leaving her a little message in the comment section and melissa thank you so much for joining us it's really a pleasure to get to talk to you and uh, let me just remind everybody at home that this sunday and every sunday evening for the next little while you can catch melissa on naked and afraid xl check your local listings and don't forget to check out melissa backwoods on instagram she's got some incredible stuff incredible knife and weaponry content on there so make sure you check that out and melissa thanks again so much much for joining us uh, it's really been a pleasure and I just want to wish you the best of luck in 2018 thank you so much it was awesome getting interviewed um, by you uh, best of luck to you and your endeavors as well and I had a blast tonight thank you so much Brandon thanks no problem no problem so guys make sure to check out the description for all those links thanks so much for tuning in we'll see you next time Bye bye